hello and uh, welcome to this lecture of strength of material in this lecture we are going to cover uh, or i should say we are going to start a very important topic that is shear force and bending moment diagram so in this session first i will give you introduction of shear force and bending moment diagram why the shear force bending moment diagrams are required how we can make shear force bending moment diagram what is the physical logic behind making a shear force and bending moment diagram so first we should understand that what are the shear forces and bending moments if i will ex i will say, uh, explain that what is a diagram so i will say that that's a representation of shear forces and bending moment diagram along the length of a beam now what is a beam beam is a member which is subjected to transverse loading and because of the transverse loading transverse loading means what suppose you are having a member like a bar or a rod if it is fixed at one end and if you are applying certain load in the axial direction in this case this member will considered as a bar member on the other end if we will apply a transverse loading to this member the member is going to subject shear force as well as the bending moment and the member known as a beam now let's come back and see what is a shear force and what is a bending moment so and how these affect the system so to understand that let's start with a simple example suppose i am having these type of cylindrical pieces and i am connect uh, joining these cylindrical pieces using glue and with the help of number of pieces i am making a beam so now my beam will look like uh, as i am showing in this figure where these are the different cylindrical members 1 2 3 4 5 6 for example and now if i will apply a transverse loading to this member suppose i am giving a load in this way here and magnitude of load is f here so what do you expect what can be happen in the Uh, this uh, beam so there are two uh, probability one that if all the pieces are made of wood let's the pieces are very hard and joined together with the help of a glue uh, so we can understand that uh, in comparison to the strength of the wood the joint strength will be lesser so what we can expect that if we are applying certain force here and any of the joint which is weaker with respect to the other there will be a you should say failure of the joint or we should say that there is a shear action this kind of action where the two members uh, move with respect to each other because of the loading we call this kind of uh, uh, action is a shearing action so what will happen here that here i am showing that after the three pieces that this is the weakest joint here so there will be a separation on the other end if we will assume that the material of this cylind these cylindrical pieces are a soft material instead of wood and then we are applying a load here so there is a chance that instead of having this shear kind of action because now i am assuming that the joint having a more strength than the material itself so what will happen here there is a chance that the whole structure will bend in this way now this is a effect of bending moment and this is a effect of shear force how we can visualize this so let's make uh, that i am showing here the two diagram with respect to the top figures so in the first case let's assume that this is my beam and i i am making six different sections here now what will happen if i am applying a force a here how much force will be here so there are two way to understand this if i will make the free body diagram of this first part and the remaining beam what will happen this is my beam and this is the first part as i am applying a force f here there will be equal and opposite force f and that f basically comes because of this end so there is will be equal and opposite f here similarly if i will break two this piece this piece and this piece so there is one f another f because of this member so equal and opposite will be here another force here another force here in this way if i will make the free body diagram of all the six pieces i can visualize this this would be the basically the force and if i will consider any of the section i will be able to know that because this force 
this these two member one force is acting in the upward direction another force is acting in the downward direction so there will be a shearing action and this force f which is responsible for this shearing action is known as the shear force on the other end if i will look the second beam or the second picture where we are assuming that the bend there will be a bending so what will happen when i will apply certain force f here and if i am interested to see what will happen to the first joint so there will be force will be there but because i am saying that the joint strength is more than the uh, material strength so what will happen instead of the shearing of the joint there will be a bending of the material and what force is responsible for this bending a moment is responsible so if i will define moment moment is also one type of force which create the bending action here or i would say that a moment is a turning effect of a force so here if i am applying a force f here and there is a bending or what is the for moment here so i will say that the f into this distance will be the suppose this is my l1 distance so the moment experienced by this joint or this member will be f into l1 so i am representing here different moments but in this case if you will compare the previous case all the member were experiencing the same force f but in this case these moments let like this is m1 m2 m3 these are not equal m1 will be let's f l1 m2 will be f l2 in this way different section will experience different bending moment particularly for this kind of structure we we, we call this kind of as a cantilever beam so now i believe that you have understood that what is a shear force and what is a bending moment both are forces but one generate shearing action another generate a bending effect so now if i will take the same diagram so here if i am interested to show the distribution of shear force so as i have seen here that all the sections are going to experience the same force f so i am saying that all the sections or all the points are going to experience the same force f if i i will break it in the infinite number of pieces all the members or all the points are going to experience the same force f so this is the distribution of shear force in this cantilever beam on the other end if i will i am interested to see the bending moment the bending moment will be what for the first point where i am applying force f the force into distance is zero so no bending moment here as i will move toward the fixed joint my length is increasing so my bending moment will be fl1 fl2 fl3 and so on because i am assuming that the distance of this point is l1 from my for point of action or where i am applying the force so in this way if i am interested to make the bending moment distribution the bending moment distribution will not be a straight line because if i will make the shear force here i can say that if this is a graph and this is f so all the points are going to experience the same f force so this is my shear force diagram on the other end if i will see the bending moment diagram my bending moment diagram will look like that my bending moment diagram will be it is zero here and as i am moving from this point to this point let this is point a and this is point b so bending moment is increasing and what would be the formula of bending moment suppose i am considering a distance x here and i am interested to find the bending moment at this point my bending moment will be fx so my bending moment will be f into x so it is a function of x only means it's a linear so it will increase increase linearly linearly and finally i am having a bending moment that would be of value f into total length of the beam so if f and the if the total length is l it will be f into l so now in this way we can make the distribution of bending moment and the distribution of shear force there are different types of beam different types of loading that we are going to cover in our next lecture so here i am just going to explain you that what is this distribution and now the next question that what is the physical significance so as i have already seen that the physical significance that if you are designing a beam you have to design your beam against the shear force as well as the bending moment because both exist every time but normally what happens beams are generally made of steel material or of a metal which is very strong so we don't see any shearing kind of action but bending is more easy to achieve because uh, 
the material has less strength in the bending and these forces are responsible for both shear force and bending moment now before we finally start making the shear force and bending moment diagram now i am explaining that what are the convention of a bending moment and shear force diagram so in different books you may find different different conventions you can follow any of the convention doesn't matter the shape is important because in some of the book you will find that the shear force diagram is positive and bending moment is negative uh, it doesn't matter you have to first define what conventions you are going to follow and then you can make the shear force and bending moment diagram for example i am i am interested to make the shear force and bending moment diagram of this cantilevered beam which is having a point load at the tip so in this case i am going to assume a distance x first then i will write what would be the shear force value at this x point so i am writing here that my shear force at a distance x will be f for this case as we have seen earlier and if i am interested to find shear force at a it will also be f so now what is the convention whether i am making positive or negative so in, in in my all lectures i am going to follow this convention if i will change my convention at that time i will explain so here i am assuming that my upward force will have a positive shear force and the downward force will have a negative shear force the, as similarly it a counter clockwise bending moment will be positive and the clockwise bending moment will be negative but some when we will talk about a uh, uh, overhanged beam that time these sign conventions may be confusing so that time again we will discuss the sign convention but here but here for shear force i am going to follow this convention so in this case my load is in the downward direction so my shear force will be negative so i am going to make a negative f value here and it will be constant throughout the length so this is my shear force diagram now what about the bending moment in case of bending moment my force is acting here and i am interested to find the bending moment first at a distance x so my bending moment at a distance x will be what f into x and this is the formula which is valid till the end because sometime what happened instead of having one force you may be having number of forces in that case for every point or every section we have to write the equation for the bending moment as well as for the shear force that we will see in our next lecture so here my bending moment will be uh, the formula for the bending moment is fx and which is valid till this end so if i will put x is equal to l my bending moment at the point a will be f into l and which is at x is equal to 0 this is 0 so this is linearly increasing and now what is the direction suppose i am making a bending moment here and my force is acting in the downward direction so my bending moment direction will be clockwise here and as as i said that the bending moment clockwise will be negative so i am going to make my bending moment in this way so this would be my bending moment that is fl and this is also negative this is also negative so in this way we are going to make bending moment of different beams in my next lecture first i am going to cover different types of beams and different types of forces and then we will start making the shear force and bending moment diagram and let me tell you making shear force and bending moment diagram is very simple if you understand the basic philosophy how you make the bending moment and shear force diagram so thank you for this session we'll see you soon in the next session